So hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. We're here at the Biotech Showcase uh, in 2016 uh, here in San Francisco. Uh, and as you can sort of see, it's a, a pretty buzzing meeting. I'm joined today uh, by uh, Christian Shetter, who's the CEO of Brigantech. Uh, it's a Martin Reed Martin Street based uh, company in Germany and you guys have got a, a slightly different approach to uh, immuno-oncology which is a hot area so could you just explain to us you know, what it is that you're targeting? Yes actually uh, Regontic is a leader in Rig I targeting our RNA therapeutics yeah. and by targeting Rig I we are harnessing one of the most essential pathways of the innate immune system and therefore you know using that to pioneer a novel immuno-oncology approach Rig I is actually uh, a receptor which is recognizing danger as a lot of other receptors uh, in the immune system. And this is a very specific receptor recognizing in nature, double-stranded RNA. Right. And our proprietary platform is allowing us to trick the immune system into believing there is danger. And it is really ranging then from immediate effects on the tumor cells, immediate immune effects and long-lasting immunity which are induced really of great help in immuno-oncology. So could you explain what you mean by danger? Well you know if our body is encountering pathogens right. of course it is great that our body has various sensors recognizing cell wall uh, you know uh, constituents of bacterial cells yeah. or nucleic acids of pathogens and we know a great deal about the so-called toll-like receptors recognizing bacterial DNA or viral DNA and a new class are the Rig I like helicases and Rig I is a member of it and by very specifically only activating this we induce a very specific antiviral type 1 interferon response which you can imagine is of great use not only in infectious diseases, but also for immuno-oncology. Right, okay. So, uh, who discovered this, this, this particular pathway in the first place? Well, actually, you know, the Rig I platform of the agonist uh, was discovered by Gunther Hartmann and Veit Hornung, who had a long-standing expertise in, uh, you know, nucleic acid sensing danger uh, right. sensors of the immune system. And, you know, they came across RNA that came across the rig eye and identified the recognized and important constituents you need to have in an RNA molecule to specifically activate rig eye. Right, okay. So, given the fact that this is, as you say, it's part of the innate immune system, by sort of, in some ways, sort of interacting with it, isn't that sort of, you know, sort of dangerous for, the, for our normal uh, activities? Actually, you know, the rig eye uh, sensor, the rig eye protein is present in virtually all of our cells. Yeah. So you can imagine it is important that this is a very distinct and controlled response yeah. you have there. Uh, and basically what is happening is when uh, you induce something, you always have also feedback mechanisms. Yeah. However, when you are in a tumor microenvironment, a lot of these feedback mechanisms are somewhat distorted and aberrant. Right. And so what we see is basically when using uh, our agonists, triggering Rig I is inducing immunogenic cell death of the tumor cells, not in helper cells, because the immune cells somewhat are, uh, you know, having a changed uh, pathway and they are sensitive to this. Right. And then in the environment of the tumor, we really activate the immune system, picking up, you know, the antigens specific for the tumor cells and you start the whole cascade. And that is really because the Rig I is a very specific and, you know, narrow receptor, right. which does the right thing in the tumor microenvironment, right. and throughout the body is just increasing the type one interferon activity. Okay, so so what is it that you've done to sort of you move this from you know being sort of scientifically interesting to actually something that might be clinically useful? Yeah, you can imagine that you know when you just use viral RNA. It is inducing all kinds of things, including Rig I. Yeah. But then exactly what you were describing, that you get too much of a pro-inflammatory response, yeah. is really reducing your therapeutic window. You actually cannot use this as a drug. Yeah. So what we succeeded in doing is reducing it to something which is highly specific only for Rig I. We use around about 20 to 24 uh, double-stranded RNA uh, molecules, which we optimized to be specific for Rig I, we dialed in some modifications which are known to 
block toll-like receptors, for example. We stabilized the molecule and we also succeeded, as this is double-stranded RNA, it's not really going into cells. Right. We selected the right formulation, we created a robust and reproducible process to formulate it, which is currently in GMP uh, scale-up. So we really have a process for the final drug product and this makes the whole thing druggable. So, so, the, so the stage you're at now, you've, you've, you've done it in um, sort of recognizable animal models? Yes, we have great data uh, in uh, tumor mouse models, but of course our aim is to go into the clinic first in man with this exciting technology yeah. as soon as possible. We are currently in our GLP TOX program and we target the clinic latest Q1 2017 and be well on track of accomplishing this. Right. So how has that been funded? Actually we have a great investor consortium uh, being funded by Series A 14.25 million in Series A. Is that, is that Euros? This is Euros yeah. and it includes you know Beringer Ingelheim Venture Fund and a W Bank you know, uh, of course, Forbion, Sunstone yeah. is in the mix as well, and Wellington Partners. So we have a very broad and nice investor. And when was that Series A uh, completed? Or when was it? Uh, that was completed months? actually um, the last tranche in summer of last year. Right. And so our aim is now, with all the great things going on, to secure a Series B to really uh, you know, allow us to not only start the phase one, but to have a fully blown phase one slash two program, allowing us with appropriate expansion arms to go into meaningful patient populations. And sort of, you know, what's the timeline for that Series B and sort of how much are you looking to raise? Well, actually we are looking forward of getting this done this year. Right. And we uh, you know, have not finally decided how much we take, uh, probably, you know, in the area of 20 to 25 million. Right, okay. And then, and that would, as you say, that would take you to sort of the end of phase one, two, is that, is that the idea? Yeah, actually it would allow us to um, have the packages ready with the full clinical uh, data to show the proof of mechanism yeah. coming from the phase one slash two. It will allow us to push forward also the scientific base because there are great opportunities also to not only, you know, use the agonization of Rig I, but in the same molecule have a silencing effect. Right. As you know, the Rig I activation is from structural components, not from sequence specificity. We will push this forward. We will also, you know, uh, generate additional leads, right. which allow us to not only go into oncology, but also infectious diseases. Right, yes. right. So how far do you actually anticipate Rig on Tech doing this on its own? I mean, you, you mentioned you've got like, people like Boring, uh, uh, Ingelheim in as a corporate VC. Uh, I mean, are you looking for partners? Well, actually, you always look for partners because it's very clear this is a very powerful technology, the new technology. It's our job to make sure, uh, you know, everything is in place. As I mentioned, the CMC is a critical part. We have this completely under control. But to do justice to just, you know, this huge opportunity, we always look for good partners. But of course, we make sure that we will have enough runway to deliver in pushing the program forward, demonstrating uh, you know, the relevant data, that we have a, a good package and a, and, a, and a great proposition for the market. So how many people do you have working for the company at the moment? Well, actually, internally, we're rather small. It's a startup, we're under 10 people, but of course we work with a lot of excellent uh, you know, uh, service providers and also consultants which are very dedicated to bring our product. So, so when did the company start then? The company started officially uh, in uh, the first quarter of 2014 right. and so now you know, I joined in January 2015 and that was the point when we started the transition from academia to uh, you know, becoming an operating company and we made great success there. Uh, you know, we succeeded in bringing on board a very seasoned executive in the biotech space, Don Debitizi. He was the CEO of Santaris until they were acquired by Roche, end of 2014. And so, you know, that brings a lot of experience to the company and we will further expand this. And currently uh, looking for, uh, you know, a CSO and a CDO to just, you know, increase our breadth of experience. Right. Okay. Well. Christian, thanks very much for stopping by and, and, and it was a pleasure for me. Explain it to us. Thanks. All right, cheers. Thank you.